ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚಾಯ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಥೋಜಯಿ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರಯಶು ಅಭದ್ರಶ್ಯು ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಪಾವಟಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಕಿ So we we speak in for Shrimad Bhagavatam canto 1 chapter 14 text number 44 and text 44 happens to be the the last verse of the chapter so i hope you you see the verse on the screen so kachit prishta manita pradayanatma banduna shanyasmi rahito nityam manyase te nyata naruk kachit prishta ta manata pradayanatma banduna shanyasmi rahito nityam manyase te nyata naruk kachit prashtata manata pradayanatma banduna shunyasmi rahito nityam manyase tenyata naruk synonyms kachit weather prashtata mena onto the most dear one ata my brother arjuna hridayana most intimate atma bandana own friend lord krishna shunya void asmi i am rahitaha having lost nityam for all time man ya say you think te yo anyata otherwise na never ruk mental distress translation and prepared by jagat guru shri prabhupada ki jai translation or is it that you are feeling empty for all time because you might have lost your most intimate friend Lord Krishna Oh my brother Arjun I can think of no other reason for your becoming so dejected So this is um Haragidis just speaking or is asking Arjun or is it that you feeling empty for all time because you might have lost your most intimate friend Lord Krishna Oh my brother Arjun I can think of no other reason for your becoming so dejected Purport All the inquisitiveness of Maharaj Yudhishthira about the world situation was already conjectured by Maharaj Yudhishthira on the basis of Lord Krishna's disappearance from the vision of the Lord and this was now disclosed by him because of the acute dejection of arjuna which could not have been possible otherwise so even though he was doubtful about it he was obliged to inquire frankly from arjun on the basis of shri narada's indication thus end the bhakti vedanta purports of the first canto 14th mm-hmm. chapter of the shrimad bhagavatam entitled the disappearance of lord shri krishna okay 
Om ajana timranda sia jana jana shalakaya chakshira militam yena tas mai shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya mana vishtam stapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa katamayam dadati swapadantikam bande ham shri guru shri yuta patakamalan shri guru vaishnavam chashri rupam sagratatam saragrantan bintam tam sajivam sadvitam sabadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vintam Sra. He Krishna Karuna Sindha Dinabandha Yagat Pate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namashtate. Tata Kanchana Gurangi Radha Vrindavinesha Revri Shapanishati Devi Pranama Mihari Priya Vankya Kalpata Rivyas Chakra Pasindupya Evata Pateta Nampava Nebhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Namaha. Nama Amavishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Tirta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Krishna Padaya Prabhupada Shri Tatmane Shri Gaura Karuna Shakti Bhakti Tirta Tinamine Nama Amavishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Teve Gura Vani Pracharine Nirvishe Shashunyavadi Pastatya Dishatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Jaya Shri Akvita Kadadara Shri Vasadi Gura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Or is it that you are feeling empty for all time because you might have lost your most intimate friend, Lord Shri Krishna? Oh, my brother Arjuna, I can think of no other reason for your becoming so dejected. Hare Krishna. Uh, <clears throat> again, thank you all for being here today. Uh, to this text, text 44 of chapter 14 of Canto 1 of the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, is the last verse of the chapter. And Throughout the previous seven, eight texts have all been questions from Maharaj Yudhishthira to Arjun about his dejection uh, and not looking himself. And like mm -hmm. Arjun was lost. Uh, Maharaj Yudhishthira has been asking Arjun so many questions. And so far, we haven't yet heard from Arjun. Arjun hasn't spoken yet. So Arjun's uh, responses will be known in the next chapter. So uh, as those of us who have been following this particular uh, class, we understand how important it is for devotees to check on each other from time to time, if not always. So Maharaj Yudhishthira, knowing his little brother Arjun and seeing such a sharp and drastic difference in his persona and demeanor, immediately went into asking so many different questions as to what could have been the reason for Arjun's de dejection. So in this last text, he is asking Arjun, are you feeling dejected because you lost your dear most friend Krishna? Is that what is causing you to have this moroseness? And Maharaj Yudhishthira himself ascertains that he cannot think of any other reason as to uh, 
being the possible cause of Arjun's dejection, other than Arjun losing his dear most friend, Krishna. So this is the platform, this is the level that we all should aspire to get to. That without Krishna, when we do not see Krishna, when we do not have Krishna's association, then it becomes very difficult and almost impossible for us to live. We see in the lives of so many great uh, devotees and more especially in the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is none other than uh, Sri Mati Radharani and Krishna combined, but uh, depicting and demonstrating the uh, nature of a devotee. So Lord Chaitanya prayed, he says, even a moment seemed to be like 12 years when I do not have your vision. I cannot even live for a moment without having your vision, without having your association. Now, uh, as devotees, we may ask ourselves, how, how do we feel when we do not have the Lord's association? How do we feel when we do not have the Guru's association? How do we feel when we do not have devotees association? Uh, devotees sometimes may engage in uh, misunderstanding and sometimes even up to the point of quarrels. Nevertheless, when you lose devotees association, that is when you will really feel the importance of devotees. It's just like your, your japa bag. One may not be chanted, but if, you, if you're traveling from one place to another and you forgot your japa bag, it's like you've lost your world. <laughs> Even though when you have the japa beads in your hand, you may not be chanting. But the mere fact that you do not have your Japa beads beside you, you feel empty. So when we do not have the word disassociation, we should feel that emptiness. We should. If we are not feeling such emptiness, we should understand that there is something wrong. And we have to look out for what that uh, is the cause of we not feeling emptiness without a devotee's association. Lord Chaitanya gave us five things that we needed to do in this Kali Yuga to maintain our association with the Lord. And the first of the five and the most important is the Sadhu Sangha. That is the bodies coming together like we're doing. This is the Sadhu Sangha. The bodies have come together and we're sharing our love, our realization, our knowledge, our doubts, all about Krishna. So one cannot act like Arjun being dejected because of the absence of his Krishna if one does not have love for Krishna. One can only demonstrate these characteristics when one has love, an undeniable love for Krishna. In our material life, in our material world, if you happen to have six children and one goes out and does not come back, at the time you expect him or her to come back, how do you feel? How would you feel? Even if you, if you rear chicken and the chicken go out or you rear sheep, the sheep go out or you rear cattle, 
the cattle go out, maybe you have 10, 12 cattle. They go out, 11 come back, the 12th one does not come back. In fact, this is also said in the, uh, in the Bible. Uh, Jesus Christ gave this parable that if you have so many sheep and you take them for flock, uh, they go on, you go on uh, feeding these sheep and then they come back, but one is remaining. Even though they are 100 and 99 come back, 99 is more than one but you will abandon the 99 and then go back to look for the missing one. And so when we have true love for Krishna, then we cannot live without Krishna. Then we cannot. But the problem is that we do not have love for Krishna. And a love is something that one cannot force someone to have. It's like if I see somebody like uh, Mitravinda Devi and I love her, how can someone stop me from not loving her? And if I do not love her, how can someone force me to love her? But there is a technique of developing love. Of course, Krishna being the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the embodiment of love. And so we all naturally have an unfathomable amount of love for Krishna. But due to the power of Krishna's own external energy, Mahamaya, we do not have that love for Krishna anymore. So there is nothing that can help us redevelop that same love we originally have for Krishna if we do not surrender to Krishna himself. Because Krishna himself states in the Gita that this material energy of mine is very, very difficult to overcome, which is Maya. This Maha Maya is very, very difficult. Maha is very, very great. Illusion is very difficult to overcome. But when one surrenders unto me, then it becomes very easy for such a person to overcome. So when we even grudgingly, unwillingly surrender to Krishna. We may not in the beginning love to hear about Krishna. In the beginning, we may not love to serve Krishna. We may not love to have anything to do with Krishna. But Krishna is so powerful and is so attractive that as soon as one attempts to hear about him, to serve him, to serve his devotees, to relate with his devotees, not even he himself, but his devotees, his paraphernalia, then gradually Krishna himself pushes away this thick curtain called Mahamaya. And then our eyes, our hearts become fully open. And then the love that is originally there begins to manifest. When Sri Prabhupada came to the West, he said, I have not come to introduce anything new to any of you. I have come to remind you that you are eternally servants of Krishna. You are forgotten, but I have come to remind you. I'm not giving you anything, Sri Prabhupada was speaking. I'm not here to give you anything. You already have it. I'm here just to remind you and help you uncover what you already have in the hearts of, uh, in the bottom of your heart. So there are so many uh, instances in the uh, scriptures where great personalities uh, couldn't uh, contain themselves. 
in the absence of Krishna. So many, so many examples. The gopis, the gopis, when they were having relationships with Krishna, uh, and Krishna disappeared, and they could not find Krishna, they began, they began crying. He says, oh, Krishna, 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 where are you? We cannot live without you. We cannot live without you. You are Krishna. You can live without us. Krishna is living without us. The gopis speaking this way. Krishna is living without us. But how can we, the gopis, live without Krishna? So that is the devotional service. One cannot live without Krishna. Even though Krishna, being Atmaram, can live by himself without anybody and still be more than we can ever imagine, ever satisfied. But for us, as living entities, we cannot live without Krishna. How can anyone assume or think that he or she can live without God? The breath of life that we have in us is being supplied by Krishna. When he takes it away, we perish, we die. The bodies we have were given to us by Krishna. When Krishna decides to take this body away, we, 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 we cannot exist. We cannot live without eating. We have to eat. Whatever food we eat is being supplied by Krishna. Even though we may not see Krishna coming right before us and presenting us the food to eat, but whatever we eat in should be understood as Krishna's mercy and Krishna being the supplier. I've been saying this many times. We have so many great scientists in the world, in the past, in today's world, and in tomorrow's world. But so far, no scientist has ever been able to create anything living. Anytime any human being created something living is as a result of borrowing from an original living. No, you borrow from an original. No, we have, we are like we have uh, different types of apples. We have different types of uh, sheep. Uh, and they are completely different from what we've known uh, from nature. But the uh, scientists take a little bit uh, gene from this, a little bit of gene from this, a little bit of gene of this, and then they bring them together. And then they create a, a seemingly a different creature. But that creature that similarly different creature was not created by that particular scientist because the ingredients that he needed to create that body was not his. It's Krishna's, it's God's. So we cannot live without Krishna, whether we like it or not. That is the true fact. So one who is intelligent would understand that without Krishna, without Krishna, one cannot live. And so when one loses Krishna's association, one feels that he cannot live anymore. See. So that is the nature of uh, the 11 entities and Krishna's uh, relationship. Uh, again, in the scriptures, uh, we read uh, where there was a time uh, there was this demon called Banasura. Banasura was a very handsome uh, soul, uh, but he had like 1,000 arms. And with this 1,000 arms, that's what usually happens. Sometimes when you have something in excess, you become, you become crazy. You lose your senses, you do not know how to use it. You know, we have people who have so much strength 
and they do not know how to better use their strength. They just bully people, beat people up for no reason. Uh, we have people uh, who have so much uh, money, they do not know how to better use their money. And so they just go around and then uh, bully people, force people to do whatever they want them to do because they have money to break them. And so this Banasura had so many hands and didn't know well or better how to use his hands. So he wanted to uh, uh, disturb devotees of the Lord and even Krishna himself. So, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Lord Shiva, because Banasura was, was a disciple or a, a devotee of uh, Shiva. So Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva is very uh, interesting uh, personality because Lord Shiva is uh, called Asutosh. Asutosh means someone who is easily pleased and at the same time uh, easily uh, angered. So there was a time that this Banasura uh, was being rude to a devotee of the Lord and the Lord wanted to punish him. So there was a fight between, between uh, Banasura and Krishna. Of course, because Banasura was a disciple or a devout devotee of uh, Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva came to his uh, side to help him. And so uh, Lord Shiva, has a, a weapon, and this weapon is said to be, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it's so hot that the effect, uh, it's called a Shiva Jwala. This, this weapon is so hot that the sun, the sun is, is like moon in the face of this Shiva Jwala. The sun is so hot. You know, but in the presence of the Shiva Jwala, the sun is like the moon, very, very calm. So uh, Lord Shiva released this weapon, Shiva Jwala. And Lord Krishna also released his weapon called Vishnu Jwala. And Lord Vishnu's Jwala is extremely cold. So there is extreme heat versus extreme cold. And it's very interesting when extreme heat met with extreme cold, the extreme cold overpowered the extreme heat. So Vishnu Jwala overcame uh, the Shiva Jwala. And that Shiva Jwala in the, in the spiritual sense, everything is alive, it's a person. So this weapon, Shiva Jwala, is also a personality. So when this personality realized that he is dealing with a superior force, that is Krishna, and he was suffering, you know, he was suffering, even though he's the embodiment of this extreme heat, but he became so much cold, he was almost dying. Very, very uncomfortable. So he had to surrender to Krishna. He surrendered to Krishna. He prayed to Krishna. And when he surrendered to Krishna, Krishna accepted his surrender and he became peaceful. He became once again a happy uh, being. And so the fact is whether willingly or unwillingly, it is our duty to surrender to Krishna. Surrender to Krishna it's not a matter of force that somebody has forced you to the point that whether you like it or not, you have to surrender. That happens sometimes, but those who are very intelligent, they surrender willingly. We remember one time we, we were lucky, we had the uh, association of His Holiness Giriraj Maharaj uh, speak to us on this very platform. And he was talking to us, uh, encouraging us to really surrender to Krishna. Use whatever we have 
in the service of Guru and Krishna. And then one devotee, I can't remember who it was, but one devotee said, Maharaj, well, you were very smart because you surrendered to Krishna when Krishna had not even forced you to surrender. Because Guru Raj Maharaj, uh, whether it is uh, karma or Krishna's arrangement, his parents were very, very rich. And so when he became a devotee, his parents didn't want him to become a devotee. His parents attempted offering him any amount of money he wanted so he does not become a devotee. Well, he did not give up devotional service. At some point, the parents thought that they were going to be able to give him some big money. And with that big money, he's going to forget about uh, Shri Prabhupada and his movement and then come back to them. Well, he took the money. So he was rich, but he did not go back to his uh, material father. He stayed with his spiritual father, Shri Prabhupada. And he surrendered everything to Shri Prabhupada. And so Maharaj, in a very uh, childlike manner, said, yes that I admit, that I surrendered to Krishna before Krishna would have forced me to surrender. So we have to learn how to love Krishna before we are forced to love Krishna in a very painful manner. No. Because whether we like it or not, we have to serve Krishna. We've always been saying, if we refuse to serve Krishna, we're going to be forced to serve dogs. We're going to be forced to serve other beings, other things. There is nothing wrong in serving others. But if we are serving others without Krishna, then there's a big problem. When we serve others because of Krishna, then there is benefit. When we do anything because of Krishna, then there is benefit. When we do things in the absence of Krishna, then there is a problem. So I was saying uh, some time ago that sometimes as devotees, actually this was said by uh, His Grace Mahatma Prabhu, uh, who is a guru. Uh, he was saying that the problem some devotees have uh, is that some devotees try to understand Shri Prabhupada through the acharyas. When one attempts to understand Shri Prabhupada, Jagat Guru Shri Prabhupada, through the eyes and the writings of the bygone acharyas, then one is sure to get it wrong. But one is sure to get it right when one tries to see or understand the bygone acharis through Shri Prabhupada. <laughs> and so similarly, when we try to love, serve beings, people, animals, whatever, without God first, then there is bound to be problems. But when we serve, love people, animals, things, whatever, be, because of God, then there is uh, a higher benefit from that. Sri Prabhupada, because he had so much love for Krishna, it's been recorded so many times he will be doing a morning walk and he will see somebody stop, water running, and he will go and then shut it off. No, because he knows that that water is Krishna's energy. And for Krishna, there is no difference between his energies and he himself. For Krishna, there is no difference between energy and energetic. For everybody else and everything else, there is a difference between the energy 
and the energetic. <clears throat> so, Sri Prabhupada says that the members of this Krishna consciousness movement must be convinced that without Krishna, one cannot be happy. One cannot be happy without Krishna. So, uh, what is the formula for happiness? Shri Prabhupada explains that the, the shortest way of becoming happy is first being peaceful. When we have peace, then we can have happiness. When there is no peace, forget about happiness. So when we do not have Krishna, then material nature is going to make sure that we do not become happy. There will be no peace. And since there is no peace, there will be no happiness. How can one be peaceful when there is this threefold of miseries bombarding us every now and then? These different clashes. One clasher is the body and the mind. Another clasher is from the demigods, you know, natural disaster, hurricane, tornadoes, famine, pandemic. We were in pandemic, uh, some places still are in pandemic. Where is the happiness? You cannot go out, you cannot do what you normally do. Where is the happiness? So when we have Krishna, Krishna says in the Gita, actually that was not said by Krishna. This was, um, who was this? Um, Sanjaya. Sanjaya concluded that wherever there is Krishna, the supreme mystic, and wherever there is Arjun, the most amazing bhakta, there will always be what? Fame, there will always be wealth, there will always be glory, there will always be victory. So oftentimes we struggling to become devotees. We, we, we sometimes are asked to see ourselves as Arjun. So if we are Arjun and we have Krishna, why do we have so much difficulties, so much hardships in our lives? Because we are not there yet. We do not have that caliber. We are not at the level where even for a minute, when we do not have Krishna, it becomes difficult for us to live. And so Arjuna realizing that his dear most friend Krishna is wrapping up his pastimes on earth and is disappearing from the surface of the earth. He felt dejected. He said, how can I live without Krishna? How can I live without Krishna? I think I had shared this also. I saw one scene at one airport some time ago. Uh, a family was traveling abroad and uh, she was there with the family members and they were having fun, they were joking, they were talking, uh, they were waiting for the flight. And when it was time for uh, the person traveling to go inside the airport to board, the rest had to stay behind. When she left and the others realized that, yes, yeah, this person has left us, is gone. I don't know what also happened to me. I was watching them so closely. One of the uh, family members became like so stunned and numb. He stood still and was thinking, she's gone, she's gone, she's gone. It was so difficult for him. See, it was so difficult for him. And so what to speak of somebody like Arjun and Krishna who have been uh, doing everything, sharing everything together and knowing who Lord Krishna is. 
And now his dear most friend, Krishna, is living. He knew that he is the best archer. That is how he is known in the world. But he is the best archer only because of Krishna's mercy. Only of Krishna's mercy. So we always chant this, that we were, we were born in the darkest region of ignorance. But by the mercy of Guru and Krishna, our eyes are now opened by the touch of knowledge. So when Krishna takes away this knowledge, Krishna again says, from me comes knowledge, forgetfulness, and remembrance. So when Krishna takes away this knowledge, then forgetfulness comes. And so we have refused, not failed, we have refused to love and serve Krishna. And when we refuse to love and serve Krishna, then the opposite is what we get, forgetfulness of Krishna. And that is why it's very, very important that devotees get together, have good, good Sadhvi Sangha. Sadhvi Sangha means devotees coming together and discussing spiritual topics, not devotees coming together and gossip. No, devotees get together and they talk about Krishna, they talk about devotees, how devotees are doing wonderful, how devotees are doing so many amazing things to serve Guru and Krishna. That is also Sadhu Sangha. That is also Krishna Katha. Krishna Katha does not simply mean talking about Radha Krishna or Narada Muni, but it also means talking about the very devotees we live with today. It's also Krishna Katha. So that is the most important thing Lord Chaitanya left with us. Out of the five essentials of practicing devotional service, Sadhu Sangha is the highest, is the topmost, is the foremost. Visiting other places, worshiping the deities, they are all very important, but the highest of all the five is the Sadhu Sangha. Because in order for us to do anything, everything, it has to start from hearing and seeing. And hearing and seeing starts from associating with Krishna, uh, Krishna and Krishna's devotees. In the first place, we do not even know Krishna without the help of his devotees, of the devotees of Krishna. How do we know Krishna? So this is an attitude that we as sadhakas will have to try to imbibe. I was sharing that the gopis were saying that without Krishna, we cannot live for a moment. Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna in the, in the form of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said he cannot live even a moment without Krishna, appears to be like 12 uh, years. Even the demigods, they also praise us, Krishna without you appearing, you know? You are neither uh, 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 Ajiana uh, Bida Marjanam. No, you are you are you are the, the embodiment of the destruction of a nations of speculative knowledge. So when we have Krishna, then Krishna with the touchlight of knowledge burns this speculative uh, uh, approach to attempting to know Krishna. And then Krishna reveals himself. Again, in the Sri Shopanishad, uh, the, the, I think that is the 16th uh, prayer. It says, please reveal yourself. Take away this thick cloud of ignorance and reveal yourself to your devotee. So this is what devotees pray for. This is what the devotees pray for. And that can only be achieved by good sadhu sangha. 
good sadhu sangha. <laughs> so I would like to end here and then see if devotees have questions, comment, realizations as to how, um, how devotees have benefited or uh, realized some positive experiences in their lives coming in contact with and associating with devotees. Hare Krishna. Uh, Salika Prabhu, there is so much noise at the background of your mic. You might have to change your microphone, I believe. Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Good. We can hear you better now. Okay, good. So, um, we want to express deep appreciation for your wonderful service, and for uh, sweet coming in. It's just less than 30 minutes to the class that we get to know. His grace, yeah, do not Prabhu is not going to be able to come. And um, I think um, you are joining the trail of the mercy receivers. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I truly believe that, yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for, for the wonderful service. And the class was so enlivening, uh, in, in, uh, especially emphasizing on the practical application of the philosophy and um, devotional service. Thank you very much. So devotees, um, please um, indicate is, by in, raising is your it hand. Govinda Pr Prabhu. Yeah, Govinda Prabhu. I'm going to call Govinda Prabhu, but I'm just trying to. Okay. Explain. Okay. Absent. Yes. So devotees can uh, indicate by using the emoji to raise your hand or wave your hand to let us know you want to ask a question. Yeah. So, uh, Govinda Prabhu. Not, 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 not just question. Comment, realization, chastisement. I surrender, please. If you, if you need, especially if you need to chastise Sadev, I'm here. Please do. <laughs> so, Govinda Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, the devotees. Uh, my respectful obeisances to you all. Hare Krishna. And particularly, uh, Sadi Prabhu, for I will chastise you for giving such <laughs> such a wonderful lecture. <laughs> How can you give such a wonderful lecture? Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. <laughs> You, if, you if ended you, up. If you find it wonderful, it's because you are wonderful <laughs> yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you ended up with the word sadhu sangha, yeah. which is very appropriate to the, you know, following the trend of your lecture. It's sadhu sangha that will bring us uh, this happiness that we are always yearning for. But um, <clears throat> it is very true and it is very practical uh, looking around the whole, the whole world that even the so-called people who have money, there are some people who have so much money that they don't know what what to use that money for. And sometimes they even throw it away. They just throw it away for people to just take it. They have so much money. They have the money that whatever they want to do, they can easily do it. But yes, still, they are not happy. So this means that the money cannot give happiness. There are some men who has, you know, whatever, beautiful women. Yes, so they are not happy. Because if they are happy, then why would they have to jump from their wives and then go for the other women? 
which means that what they possess, what they have, they are not satisfied with. And if you are not satisfied, it means you are not happy. So we can go on and on and on and on and on. We cannot trace happiness in this world. That means that uh, we are beyond the so-called happiness in this world. The so-called happiness is only pertaining to the physical. And because we are not physical bodies, but rather spiritual entities, we cannot be satisfied with our material possessions. And so we are not happy. So my question is, <clears throat> and again, you know, when, when, when we are in Ketan, when we are in Ketan, when we are, we are deep in Ketan, we forget about anything material. We forget about anything that pertains to the body. We forget about our money. We forget about our bank account. We forget about our wives and children, our properties. We forget about our names. We forget about everything. And because we have forgotten about everything and we are only pinpointed, our mind is only pinpointed on Krishna and Krishna's holy name. We can all testify that at that moment, we are extremely, extremely happy. So this, this is the proof that we can only be happy when we have Krishna. So my question is, how do we come to this stage of transcendence? This stage, the mood, when we are doing the ketan and we are carried by the ketan, we are carried by the holy name, that kind of state. How do we maintain it? Because we are, we are so embodied, we are so here. And after the gate time, we go back to our normal activities and we are not happy. The happiness is gone. How do we maintain this mood when we are in that stage of ketan? Ketan in Yasadari, when we are in that stage, how do we maintain it? That's my question. Because we are looking for this happiness. How do we maintain it? Well, Hare Krishna, thank you so much for the wonderful question. As usual, Govinda Prabhu asks lots of difficult, probing, but very enlightening questions. Uh, I can, I have already shared this with the devotees here before, but uh, attempting to answer your question, you're asking this question because by Guru and Krishna's grace and mercy, you have at least once or twice or many more tasted this special happiness. I shared with these devotees, I don't think you were on the platform that day, but there was a time uh, at Harichakra Prabhu's temple, Kumase, Ghana. I'm not sure whether it was Janmastami or Gorupunima, and we were having ecstatic kirtan. You, Govinda Prabhu, were playing the Mredanga. But the Mredanga only had the metal part with the screws, and there was no uh, th that plastic uh, cushion that covers the, the metal part. And you were playing the Mredanga. And Govinda Prabhu got so, so, so absorbed he was playing the medanga and at the same time hitting the metallic part of the medanga up to the point that the whole medanga head was full of blood from his palm. But he didn't feel it. I saw it and I went and then I told him, hey, I said, Prabhuji, look at what's happening. He looked at his palm, he saw the blood, but he could not stop. I attempted continuing to play the medanga, so I forcibly took the medanga away from him, cleaned the head of the medanga of the blood, and I started playing the medanga little by little, gradually. And for whatever reason, I was also overpowered by the kirtan, and I also started slapping the medanga. I also started bleeding, and I also didn't feel it. You know, so Governor Prabhu's question is, how do we maintain that level of happiness? Mm. 
it's not it's not easy and um i wouldn't say it's not possible it's possible but it's not easy at our stage to maintain that because when we get to that when we do have that level of taste it is just by krishna's mercy krishna gives us that taste momentarily to help us understand that yes there is a real true ecstasy why were we having this ecstasy we were we were nobody took any drugs no nobody took any ecstasy nobody took any uh, coke nobody took any heroin nobody took any weed nothing but we having this ecstasy all because of just repeating the names of krishna because the names of krishna is not different from krishna himself so when we chant the holy names of the lord and when we see the beautiful form of the lord anything in connection with krishna and at krishna's own grace by krishna's own grace and mercy he may give us a little bit taste of his holy name the only way that can be maintained is when we get to that level of sudanam where we 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 do not realize that we even have anything to think about to care for all we think about is krishna and that cannot be like a uh, factory manufactured it cannot be manufactured it has to come by gradual but consistent practice and when lord krishna sees our attempt to render service to him without motivation without interruption then krishna may give us that bhava give us that ecstasy give us that unlimited pleasure that cannot be described such pleasure cannot be described such ecstasy cannot be described because it's, it's beyond description one has to taste it to feel it it's a it's, it's a feel it, it, it's not something one can describe but in order for one to stay there forever stay at that top level forever one has to be 100% dedicated to guru and krishna thinking nothing about himself but krishna and his devotees even in the material world those who try to take care of others live better lives than those who try to take care of themselves alone so when we try to deny ourselves and serve others that is when we become alive that's all i can share uh i saw ganga prashad prabhu is here ganga prashad prabhu you may add it to prabhu's question let me see ganga prashad is here uh shriman varha prabhu is here uh vrajit taruni aru chakra anadi nidanam salika great devotees you may share uh you or you may add it to what i have said are krishna are krishna i think your answer is almost if not perfect because only krishna is perfect we are just trying to be perfect in the likes of krishna but for me i think i'm satisfied with the answer i don't think i could do more than that but then um ganga prashad prabhu is there so prabhu ganga prashad if you have anything to ask to that question how do we maintain the mood of ecstatic happiness that we experience while in the kirtan throughout the day throughout the week throughout the month throughout the year ganga prashad prabhu oh my god how how wonderful that would be <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually this is where we should be always in ecstasy yes yeah to constantly remember krishna never forgetting for a moment yeah 
Okay. Um, Simon Valad, Prabhu. Uh, Valad Prabhu is no longer here. I think it's brother. Oh, uh, no, he's still here. Okay, Simon Valad Prabhu is here. Yeah. Okay, Prabhu, if you, if it's possible, if you're not too busy, if you can share something on this topic. It may, it, it may not be exactly from the question, but any, any words of wisdom, any sharing will be appreciated very much. Yeah. Uh, there is one, there is one, <coughs> excuse me, there is one prayer I was reading from uh, Bilbo Mangal Thakur. And uh, you know, Bilbo Mangal Thakur uh, became a, a great personality mm -hmm. from a prostitute. So he has very wonderful prayers. Uh, and one of his prayers, he says, how miserable it is, um, my dear Lord Shri Krishna, O oh friend of the, of the hopeless. Everybody is a hopeless being without Krishna. How can I pass these thankless days without seeing you? So uh, we also read uh, how Krishna, when he revealed himself to Narada Muni. Narada Muni saw Krishna and then Krishna disappeared. Narada Muni was doing everything to catch uh, a glance of Krishna again. And Krishna told him, no, you won't see me anymore until you've matured enough. And then you see me again. Then that actually gave uh, Narada Muni so much vigor to do everything he could to please Lord Krishna so he can have vision of the Lord again. Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhuji, go ahead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for that class. And my obeisances to everybody. Uh, very nice question also. How do we maintain our ecstasy? <laughs> Maybe, uh, well, there are two ways. There are two ways we can also look at it. For, for what you have said, that's okay. Um, we can also look at it the way Radharani uh, tried to maintain our ecstasy. Mm -hmm. No one can be constant in ecstasy more than Radharani. And Radharani said, oh my Lord, my, the goal of my life is to satisfy you, to see you. So, um, and she said, and if, and it's for the goal of uh, satisfying Krishna that she does everything she does. So like also devotee, Ketan, whatever, hearing, is to satisfy Krishna. So Radharani said, the goal of my life is to satisfy Krishna, but if what will satisfy you is my distress, then I pray that such be my goal of life. Hmm. So, I mean, if you look at that, Radharani just is not thinking of just being in ecstasy, but even if, if uh, uh, being in distress is what will please Krishna, then she wants to remain in distress all her life. Because when we're thinking of being in ecstasy, it's like we want to enjoy it. But then the goal of satisfying Krishna is not, not to want to enjoy. <laughs> it's to want to do whatever will please Krishna, whether it makes us happy or not. And that's, that's the prayer of Lord Chintanya. Uh, whether you embrace me or you make me broken hearted by not being present before me, you know, you, you are free to do whatever you can. Yes, so, you are still my worship of the Lord. So our, our ecstasy is that Krishna is pleased. Yeah. Our ecstasy is not the moment of joy in Ketan alone or the moment of joy in any service. But our ecstasy is, if Krishna is pleased, then I'm okay. Even if it brings me distress, like Radharani says. So we have to see it on both on that both sides. So the other side, the other thing I can hide is also the fact that yes, Ketan Ketaniya Sadahari, we always want to chant and be happy. Yes, like 
Govinda Prabhu say, why chanting we forget everything? There's no doubt about it. But that same mood should be brought into every service. Mm. So whatever we're doing for Krishna, it should be like Ketan. Uh, we should bring that mood into everything that we're doing for Krishna. That mood should not be only one we're chanting. So I think the, the, we can also see in those two ways. Haribo, Hare Krishna. Haribo. Thank you so much, Sri Varaha Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sri Varaha Prabhu. That was a very nice one. And um, I think it's coming from long years of self-realization. Yes. Govinda Prabhu wants a, uh, Maybe a follow-up follow question, I guess. Yes, yeah. go ahead, Govinda Prabhu. <clears throat> Yeah, um, thank you very much, uh, Varaha Prabhu. Actually, <laughs> that was going to be my second question. And it's like he was, he was in my heart. I was reading <laughs> my mind and heart. <laughs> thank you very much. You know, Varaha Prabhu is a very great, great personality. He's a great devotee of Lord Krishna. Sometimes, you know, devo all devotees are very, very special because uh, devotional service, what I know, is a, is a special party organized by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. And so where, whoever is, is, is participating in this party means that the person has been served very special invitation, not uh, by anybody rather than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. So whoever is participating in this devotional service is a very, very special person because you cannot invite people to your party if you don't have you know, relationship with such, such people. And so we appreciate all devotees very, very much on this platform and especially in this movement of Krishna consciousness. And Vara Prabhu, as we know him for a very, very long time, is a very, very great devotee of the Lord. We appreciate him so much. And whenever he opens his mouth, all his contributions are full of wisdom. So Prabhu Vara, uh, thank you very, very much. So that was going to be my, my question. That <laughs> how, do we, how do we derive ecstasy in anxiety? But when we are serving Krishna, sometimes we are being touched, we are being provoked, we, are, uh, we pass through a whole lot of miserable conditions in our attempt to serve Krishna. So how do we derive our I mean, happiness in that? Because when we are in that mood also, it's not the same as we are in Ketan. When we are in Ketan, we, you know, we, we behave abnormal, abnormal that if anybody is standing by and looking at you in that kind of state, he can immediately tell that you are, you are not here. But in our distressful situations, when we are trying to save and there are some disturbances, we are not in the same mood, even though it's the same Krishna that we are serving. So the question is, how, how, do, we, how do we derive that same pleasure when we are in trouble, when we are in anxiety in our attempt to serve Krishna. Well, uh, Hare Krishna, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I, I, I'll try to speak a little bit about it and hopefully Shriman Varaha Prabhu can also add it to it. Uh, Ganga Prashad uh, Salika Prabhu is also here. Uh, oftentimes, Oftentimes, lots of people uh, think that anxiety uh, is a very bad thing. But anxiety is a very, very positive thing. Uh, psychologically, it is recommended that in order for one to do well in an exam, one should have anxiety. If one does not have anxiety, then it will be very difficult for such a person to score higher uh, scores uh, grade in the exam because the anxiety will make you do more than you would normally do. 
But one just have to pay attention and be careful that that anxiety does not develop to a point where it becomes a stressful situation. Stress is a killer. Anxiety is very helpful. And so <clears throat> I can understand your question, Govinda, probably because you are a Kirtanier. So you speaking from realization and experience. There are some devotees who are also very much into deity worship. So they may be wanting to dress a deity in a particular way, and they may be having so much difficult time put coming up uh, with that particular dressing that they want to uh, give to the deities. But from that anxiety, they are able to do much better than they could have ever imagined. So uh, I have had this experience before. There was a time I was dressing, I, I used to dress uh, Lalita Vishaka in Gita Nagri. And of course I used to dress them all the time. So there was a time I wanted to dress them in a different way that I haven't actually done it before. Uh, to make them look like completely different. And I was having so much hard time getting it done. So it's like I had to restart the whole dressing again. So I was in anxiety, but that anxiety also helped me to think more critical, how to bring up the type of, the way I wanted the, the skirt, and the uh, uh, scarf come together and meet and look like a butterfly at the back. That's what I was planning, thinking to do it. And by, by their mercies, I was able to do it. But if I had not had that anxiety and I just tried it, it did not work and I just gave up then I wouldn't have been able to do it. So anxiety means that we tried to do something and we were not successful. But because we want to do it, we try, we plan, we, we, we think, we ponder, how are we going to get it done? And from such struggles, pondering, thinking, we're able to come up with the solution. So my little understanding is that anxiety in itself is not bad per se. But when we do not take very good care of it and let it develop to become a stressful situation, then stress like dumpens our spirit. You know, when someone is stressed out, you cannot even do anything. You cannot even get up to go and eat. So that becomes a problem. But anxiety, it's good to have anxiety, actually. In devotional service, anxiety is expected and is actually recommended. We should not just be very comfortable uh, with whatever we're doing. Uh, we become very uh, complacent uh, with whatever we're doing. You know, it's said that Radharani never prepares the same meal to Krishna because she's always coming up with different things, different things. So that means that she's having anxiety. No, I do not want to do the same thing again. How do I make some small changes to make it look uh, taste different? So that is all I have to share, except someone else has something else to share. Like, uh, if what is the floor is open. Let's, let's Thank make you very a much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. That was a transcendental answer for a transcendental anxiety. <laughs> but, but I'm not a prophet. But I think if I capture the question of Govinda Prabhu properly, I think Govinda Prabhu wants to know how we manage material anxiety. Why? Because um, spiritual anxiety is good. Sometimes it could be very disturbing. But at the end of the at the end of the day, it is always pleasing to the heart. I think I can relate to some of the. Uh, examples you, you relate mm. uh, while dressing the deities, while trying to do some service for the Lord, 
yeah. there's so much anxiety, but you're not feeling that kind of pain, <laughs> material kind of pain. And at the end, even after the whole of this experience, you just laughed when you when you remember all of the kind of experiences you've gone through. But in this case, when you have uh, this material anxiety, of course, yes, one can say that for a devotee, there is no material life. Every activity of a devotee is spiritual. But this material life experience of um, the children's school fee is not there, and then the student is going to be sent out of the school. Um, there is no uh, uh, um, basic requirements of life, or family member is sick, or some of these activities that directly not relate to the service of the deities in terms mm -hmm. of cooking, dressing the deities, trying to do rachayatra or organize festivals and all of that. Those are different, but this seemingly yeah. are external activities, yeah. anxiety. How do we manage that? Well, uh, th thank you for uh, throwing more light on uh, Governor Prabhu's question. And I'm happy you, you said that. And I'm also happy that uh, Governor Prabhu is my big brother and we talk from time to time. And if that is his question, then I will, I will uh, plead with him that he allows me to share something he had shared with me a few days ago. Wow. Yes. Uh, because what, to what, what he shared with me perfectly uh, answers this question. Okay. Because as, as we saw him, he, he's driving you now. So in his, in his truck, he, uh, he has a microwave in his truck. And there was a time he wanted to warm his food and the microwave wouldn't work. And he could not eat the food cold. So he was in anxiety. So he tried to stop at one place to uh, go to one uh, shop and get his food warmed. And he was denied. They didn't, they didn't allow him. They said they don't, they don't allow uh, strangers to come do that, <laughs> as you would imagine. So he was in anxiety and he kept praying to Krishna, Krishna, what do I do? What do I do? And he was wondering, do I have to go buy another microwave? What do I do? So he got out of the truck and started doing everything he possibly could. He had tried everything he could. The microwave wouldn't work. But he kept, he kept working on it, working on it. And then finally, he was able to get it work. <laughs> so my level understanding in life, in general life, like life outside direct service to Krishna is that when we have these challenges, of course, we are human beings. We're going to have this anxiety. But behind the anxiety, we should also have the conviction that if, if Krishna wants this to be successful, he will. And if it does not go through, it means Krishna didn't want it to go through. See, when we try to leave this understanding in all walks of life that Krishna is the true doer. In other words, we as living entities can do anything and everything, but to achieve the expected result remains in the hands of Krishna. Then as much as we try, when things do not go our way, we do not become so much disturbed about it. We leave it to Krishna that, okay, Krishna, you know, I did my best. My best was not good enough. You didn't want it to happen. Okay, it's easier said than done. It's easier said than done. I'm sitting here talking as if that is how I live my life. That is not how I live my life, but I'm trying to speak the scriptures and also to remind myself that if and when I am or any of us as devotees 
uh, are faced with the situations like that, where we have anxieties of uh, things that are not directly related to Krishna's service. We should have this conviction that we try our best, we do our best, and then we, we leave the results to Krishna. And if Krishna wills, he lets it happen. If Krishna doesn't want it happen, he doesn't let it happen. Like Varad Prabhu said, that the advanced devotees, they are, no more, they are not so much concerned about they becoming happy. They are so much concerned about Krishna becoming happy. So if we can always think that, well, Krishna, if that, if that is what makes you happy, so be it. If that doesn't make you happy, then do something about it. Again, I'm repeating myself over and over. It's always easier said than done. That is not how I live my life. And I pray that uh, Guru and Krishna may give me the strength to accept things when they do not go my way. But that is, I believe, is how we should try to look at things and go through our day-to-day -day, uh, activities. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for the answer. I think um, you've done justice to the question. Actually, um, you ended by a very nice word saying that, yeah, Govinda program come in just a second. Uh, you ended by saying something which uh, gives me a kind of uh, support. It is easier said than done. And that is the real challenge because um, for a devotee, this is actually what he's supposed to be. This is what he's supposed to be. Uh, the mood of a devotee. In fact, as you're speaking, I was just remembering um, Kunti's prayer and um, thinking, oh, when I will I be like Kunti? And <laughs> Pray to the Lord, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if you make me broken hearted by not being present before me, uh, uh, um, you are still a worshipable Lord. <laughs> I, I'm still my worshipable Lord. So I was just thinking of all of this prayer and I was wondering, I wish I can be like that because um, uh, if anyone is, Govinda is actually a prophet because uh, uh, I think I'm. Um, that that, that 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 relates to me more directly because uh, sitting in this class, I was actually in an anxiety or something. And uh, I almost did not actually stay for this class. But I just said, okay, if if I if I don't attend this class and I go for this to attend to this issue, um, <clears throat> what is the guarantee? Because I don't even have any we I, I can't think of how to go about the challenge that I'm going through. So I said, okay, let me give this time to Krishna. Maybe Krishna at the end of the class will give me some, um, some realization of what to do. And I was very happy when Govinda asked that question. So that was why I actually did a follow-up um, explanation of that. So the question is actually for me. So the problem is that most of the time, we do forget Krishna when this anxiety comes. We just want to struggle to do something. And then um, we become like a Mara Judistria. Uh, the Pandavas, we forget Krishna. Mm -hmm. And then we want to do things our own way. <laughs> Thank you very much for the elaborate answer. Uh, Govinda Prabhu, please, can go ahead? Uh, devotees, I'm so sorry. Uh, it looks like I'm taking the whole show today. A uh, show of question. Uh, please forgive me. I have to allow others also to, to ask their questions. But uh, let me please ask this last question. Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, devotees are trying to serve Krishna in, in different ways, diverse ways devotees are trying to serve Krishna. The Pujari, uh, the Pujari is doing his possible best to dress deities. And after doing all that, the Pujari will stand by and look at the deities and he's very happy. And the person cooking in the kitchen for Krishna and his devotees, you know, with all the struggle from setting up the fire till the end of the cooking, uh, his energy and love is invested into this type of service. And at the end of the day, you see the devotees 
enjoying the prasada and happy, the cook is also happy. Uh, likewise, other areas of services. When the devotee does it and, and do it very well, he feels so happy. So uh, the diverse ways devotees try to serve Krishna. But particularly when we are doing ketans, the kind of happiness that we go in uh, is completely different from these areas of services that devotees participate uh, uh, in serving Krishna. So why is it that we don't experience the same type of ecstasy when we are rendering service in different, different ways uh, other, than, other than chanting the holy names of Krishna? How is it that we don't experience the same ecstasy? What is what is Oh well, uh, the little I can say to that is that uh, Shrapopad himself, even though has given us so many different types of services, which are all devotional services, but as far as I can remember. There is only one aspect of this diverse devotional service uh, where Sri Prabhupada said is the only thing and the only point where thing can cease, that is Kilton. So even when you're doing Japa, it's still chanting the holy names of the Lord, but you still will be thinking, your mind will be wandering here and there. But when one absorbs himself in a Kilton, then like you were saying, you, you are out of this world because Kirtan, my little understanding is that like when we chant, when we chant, we are making an effort to approach Krishna. And when we do Kirtan, we are making an effort to approach Krishna, but at the same time, we are also attracting Krishna. That's why the, the last verse, uh, stanza seven of the Sundar Arati says, Shiva Shuka Narada. You know, when, when we do these uh, kirtans, these great personalities, they all come. They all come to participate. And so the amalgamation of these great personalities being present, because when we do kirtan, it's not just the devotees who we see are uh, performing the kirtan. There are other unseen beings who are also doing it with us. And personally, I have, I have observed, like when we go out in a group chanting, uh, doing a kirtan, I feel more blessed. You can, you can back to yeah. I feel more blessed. So, my little understanding is that, yes, even though there are many other services, which are all devotional service, but Kilton is a very, very unique and special uh, aspect of devotional service that is incomparable. I mean, it's the only thing that uh, shortens, we read the past times of Lord Chaitanya performing ecstatic Kilton, Kirtans with his intimate associates. And Lord Chaitanya was very tall, but the ecstasy, he will, he will quail into his body like a tortoise. No. When he chants Japa, he doesn't have such uh, experiences. So Kirtan uh, is that special level of mercy that Krishna showers on all participants, especially when one performing the kirtan tries his best or her best to just serve Guru and Krishna without any personal thing. And I have, I have experienced this, I've shared this with you. There have been few times that I, I was asked to lead kirtan. And in my mind, I thought that I was going to lead very beautiful kirtan. And I got so tired very easily. And I couldn't even dance. 
But when I do not think in my mind that I'm going to do something to impress anybody, I can chant for so long without getting tired, without losing my voice. So it's a special mercy uh, that Guru and Krishna give when we involve ourselves in kirtan, especially when we try to do it just to please Guru and Krishna. And coming back to what uh, Shriman Vara Prabhu said, doing things to please the senses of Krishna rather than doing things to please our own senses. That's where the true ecstasy comes because you'll be surprised. Sometimes the very kirtan one is performing and having this ecstasy. Somebody may be in that same kirtan, but feels nothing because that devotee is not attempting to immerse himself or herself into the kirtan. That's my little answer. Even though I say a little about this, it's quite a lengthy answer. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank, yeah, you. Because, because thank the, you, thank you, thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Prabhu, for the answers. That's a beautiful one. Actually, um, from this example you share, okay, so Brother Prabhu, uh, just a second. So, yeah. from the examples you share about yourself, about Kita, I, I think also uh, I have some realization that most of the time, whether it is in deity worship, whether it is in cooking, whether it is in the kitchen, if, uh, if if one actually has, if, or, or, or let me use the word, if one is conscious in that service, there's a kind of realization that comes after to make you realize that most of the time, um, when we surrender to Krishna, our intention to serve, there is a kind of an empowerment that goes through. I've had experience several times that when I want to dress the deities in the morning, sometimes I will come with the full figure of mine and I said, I'm going to dress the deities like this. And then by the time I come back, finish dressing, when I go to the front of the deities and I'm looking at them, I myself will be so dissatisfied that um, I will be feeling so uncomfortable to even look at the um, devotee's face when they are uh, facing the deities. They may sometimes even go ahead and I really appreciate but I'll be feeling so dissatisfied because that's not what I do now. So actually, it's a very big lesson there because, um, and in Kitan also, I, I had that se several experiences in cooking, you know, in every activities of devotional service. Um, the, 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 the empowerment comes when we really actually focus. And then you said something very interesting, which I think um, is a very big reminder for me and many other persons here. I can attest to is that um, when we want to do any of the service, the ability to try to remember that this is for Krishna is very important, especially during the Kita. Thank you. Simon Varap, please call your mute. Um, let's have your comment or question. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, first is to um uh, uh, Prabhu blew so much air into my ego and uh, I have to purify myself from that by chanting Vishnu 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 Vishnu. <laughs> anyway. Um, um Prabhu, that, that was your that was your ego. It was not your false ego, so don't worry. <laughs> Anyway, uh, just I, I mean, I would like to contribute without my ego being being uh, blown up till I forget myself. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, the, the the previous question about uh, anxiety, how to how to be ecstatic, why being anxiety in service. <laughs> So uh, Sila Rupa Goswami has discussed this. Um, among the nine nine symptoms of a devote or, or symptoms that shows that a devotee is advancing, and one of them is asabanda, <clears throat> which means open against hope. 
So hoping against hope is, of course, signs of anxiety. <laughs> but he actually described it as a sign of the symptom of advancement. When one becomes uh, troubled and hoping, and hoping that uh, he can at least please Krishna in this endeavor. So whether it is material service or whatever a devotee is engaged in, uh, it might be his family, uh, his deep uh, prescribed duty, varna, it might be uh, devotional service. But the fact that he's in anxiety on how to please Krishna doing that, because even if we are in anxiety, uh, paying our children's school fees or doing whatever our material duty is, but it's to please Krishna, a devotee does whatever he does to please Krishna. His duty as a griyasta is to please Krishna. His duty as a businessman is to please Krishna. So uh, if a devotee, when he gets to that point of hoping against hope, which is another word for anxiety, Srila Rupa Goswami says that is one of the symptoms, of the nine symptoms that a devotee is advancing. Because he's really absorbed trying to place Krishna and it's making him really, really in anxiety. It's open against hope. Okay? So that we should see as uh, that automatically, even though you may not understand uh, how that is... Uh, ecstasy, but if a devotee is feeling like this, like Sadi Prabhu mentioned, one should not be satisfied that I've done enough. And that's exactly what Rupa Goswami said. Uh, one should not be complacent in devotional service. One should not think I've done enough. So it should always be an anxiety how to, to do more for Krishna. So there's also um, example of many other devotees who have asked for, with Krishna with anxiety. Like Arjun, Arjun was in the anxiety during the war. Uh, and he, he, he described his feelings and his sentiments. My, 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 my mouth is dried, my Gandiba, Gandiba boy is falling from my hand and I'm seeing only, only misfortune. He was in terrible anxiety. <laughs> yeah. But that was also his advancement. That was you know, the way to his advancement mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. what led to his surrender. <laughs> Uh, you know, and then he said, Krishna, until he said, Krishna, now I'm ready to do whatever you ask me to do. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, we can see this in the different levels of ras that devotees have with Krishna. But in the science of devotion, Srila Rupa Goswami actually made us to understand that even feeling anxiety in services, it's a sign of advancement in spiritual life. It's not only when we're dancing in Ketan. Okay. Now, the last question is about uh, why don't we? Why is it is it only in Kirtan that we derive this kind of joy? Of course, that is the same reason why it is said that uh, chanting and hearing is the uh, the the most important of all the nine processes. Otherwise, they would not say it's the most important. It is the most important because it gives us the like Lord Chaitanya said, it gives us the taste that we are longing for. You know, he said it gives us that taste that we're always longing for. Cheto da bana ma jana baba ma da ba guni ba bana. Sreya kaira ba chandrika bitara nam vidya ba duji ba nam. Ananda budi ba dana. Ananda budi ba dana. So you know, this is what gives that ecstasy. Lots of time himself, you know, he he, he qualified. <laughs> so Prabhu, what you're saying is right, and that's why Lord Chaitanya himself as giving uh, this as the main gate to the love of God, uh, Ketanya Sadahari. <laughs> okay, so that is just my small contribution. Thank you for the opportunity. Hare well. Krishna, thank you so much. Wow, this is, this is real Sadhu Sangha. Well, what, what else can we ask for? I mean, there is nothing better than this. I truly appreciate uh, devotees coming together every single day, five days in a week, unfailingly, to hear each other, see each other, and to hear from the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's amazing. This is the, our, our, our ticket, our ticket to going back home. Hare Krishna, Salika Prabhu, it's up to you. Well, if no one has anything else to say or share, uh, 
Is Ganga Prashad Prabhu here? He's been so quiet. Uh, Ganga Prashad. No, it's no more here. Okay. Well, I think we may have to bring the class to a close. Mm -hmm. It's almost two hours. Uh, thank you all for allowing me and giving me your blessings to speak. Uh, even though I wasn't prepared to speak, but somehow you gave me some encouragement uh, to speak. Uh, forgive me for whatever uh, mistakes I might have made. Uh, I, only, I only try to do this as a service. Hare Krishna. Salika Prabhu, take it up. Thank Thank, yes, good. Thank you so much, Sadiq Prabhu, for the wonderful service. Uh, we want to especially thank um, His Grace um, Govinda Prabhu for giving life to this um, session. His Grace Truman Vara Prabhu for the uh, continuous con uh, contribution and comments and uh, guidance as a senior popular. Thank you very much for being here. We express our deep appreciation to all of the devotees and Adilindana Prabhu, Govinda Prabhu. Um, Arishakra Prabhu, uh, Bhakta uh, Aladimiji, Loka Mataji, for especially, I have a very special message even on, on Mother Loka. I've just got some secret message that I should especially thank you so much for doing a very special work on our <laughs> dear God brother. Uh, it's a great sad day for you. Oh thank you very God. much, Mother. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Don't worry, we'll come and do. Uh, 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 anyway, I, 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 I'll leave that. I'll leave it offline because we're still alive. <laughs> thank you very much. I uh, will thank all of the devotees. Narayani Mataji, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Stephen Allo, thank you so much for being here every other time. Or Sunita Devi. We thank you very, very much for your wonderful association. Vajat Taruni Matraji, we thank you so much for being here. Uh, your continuous patronage here keeps this platform alive. So we thank you all very much for your wonderful service. So at this time, as our usual tradition for uh, calling the day, uh, we we'll request all of the devotees to please carry on mute now. Let us now the shadow part of the Giving us this wonderful nectar. Hare Hare Krishna 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 Thank you, thank you.